You're being a spoiled brat, Dad. Yeah, tell him. Tell him. Is she gonna make him a good guy? Come on. I wouldn't think of my own daughter that way. So who was it who was saying, you're starting to remind me of your mother? <sighs> nope. He's the same. He's the same. The exact same. Never changed. Never got any better. Never grew up. He's the same. All right. How's it going, everybody? Hoodlamut here, back with some more Steins Gate Zero. And uh, last time, we were introduced to uh, all of Mayuri's friends. And uh, we're finding that it seems Steins Gate Zero is not just within Okabe's head. We are now going to multiple characters' heads. I don't know if that's going to be for the entirety of the game, or just for this kind of, so we can get a little insight on what each character is kind of thinking at the moment, but so far we've been in uh, Maho's head, uh, aside from Okabe, uh, Fubuki's head, which we didn't even know in the first game, and uh, then now Suzuha's head. So this is kind of interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see what they're going to try to do with the, the different story elements here. I, I, it seems like they're giving us this kind of omniscient you know, third person view, um, which is def it's definitely different than the first game where we were literally just seeing everything from Okabe's one perspective, wherever he went is what we witnessed. So very interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with it. But anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. <sighs> Suzaha Amane was about to run out of patience. The cause was the young man in the room with her. Her father. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. Itaru Hishida, a.k.a. Daru. His massively obese body was leaning forward over a computer monitor, and he had a dopey grin on his face. He'd finally gotten up around 11 a.m., gulped down three cups of instant ramen, and now was surfing the internet. Uh... Hmm? Oh? Oh? What? Wait, normies must die pee? And Parthenon? Our husband and wife? Nobody told me about this. And wait, his handle is normies must die, but he's a normal. He's got a wife. That's not fair. Ugh. I thought he was on the side of us loners. This means war. It's trolling time. <laughs> Gosh. It's trolling time. <laughs> oh no. I'd like to imagine that's what every troll does on the internet. It's just like, they get, they, they sit down, you know, with their Dorito bag and Mountain Dew. They just like crack their fingers like, It's trolling time. <laughs> you know? Oh, no. Whoa! T-I-L, that at-chan, and Tweeter are already ticked off. I missed the boat. I need to go back and look at the timeline again. Dad! Oh my gosh, I hate him. I hate his face, dude. It looks so gross in this one. I don't know why, it's just, it looks so bad to me, I don't like it. I'll probably get used to it, but it, I'm so used to what he used to look like. I don't know why this just, this throws me off so bad. Oh my goodness. I don't know what it is either, I'm trying to figure it out. I, I don't know if it's like the shadow under the nose. It, something, something's throwing me off though. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Yes? That's what Suzaha called her father. It's who he was, after all. So there was nothing else to call him. Suzaha was a time traveler from the year 2036, and seven years from now, he would become her father. Stop screwing around. All you ever do is lie around and eat, or look at the internet, or play video games. 
I told you that nothing but instant noodles and snacks will make you sick. But that's still all you ever eat. In fact, his PC desk was covered with snacks. She cleaned it regularly, but it never seemed to make a difference. And I keep telling you to exercise, but you never do. Suzaha realized she was complaining more than usual, but she had to say it anyway. At this rate, in the future... And then she realized that Itteru wasn't even listening to her. His eyes were fixed on the computer monitor. He'd moved his mouse out of sight, but she could still hear him clicking it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Listen to me. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, I was serious. I thought this was going to be silly. Oh, <laughs> what is she holding? What is that? Suzaha approached her father from behind and put the hairspray can she'd been hiding up to his neck. Ugh. Itteru seemed to think it was a gun. He stuck his hands up. Threats like this worked. They worked because she'd told him that she'd survived the Third World War, and the wars and chaos of 2036, and that she was ready to draw a gun and pull the trigger whenever she needed to. S Suza, if you don't stop, Daddy's gonna get mad. <laughs> Gosh, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> With the burning passion, I hate it. I'm getting mad at you right now. Right. Sorry. B but you know about my secret job, right? I'm pretty busy with that. When you're as good a hacker as I am, there are always a ton of offers. I don't have time to eat real food, right? And... There's the time difference with overseas clients, so sometimes I'm, like, up all night. In the future, you used to say that all the time, and then Mom would always get mad at you. <sighs> Even if, for the sake of the argument, we can't do anything about your sleep schedule, I can't let you keep eating all this unhealthy food. You'll stop immediately. Got it. <laughs> but work's hard, and so's the time machine research. I need to relax. You just use that as an excuse to slack off. You're being a spoiled brat, Dad. Yeah, tell him. Tell him. Is she gonna make him a good guy? Is she gonna turn him from being a, a, a freaking just degenerate to being an actually, like, good good guy? Like, is he gonna get thinned out and all this stuff, or are we gonna see a transformation happen? Suzaha was always amazed that her dad managed to survive the future's wars. Probably because of her, right? But since the time machine research would affect the future, and eventually Suzaha's very presence here, she couldn't tell him to stop. Even after Rintaro Okabe stopped coming to the future gadget lab, Itaru had kept working on the time machine all by himself. Interesting. Is it because of her? Suzaha never said a word about it. That's interesting. So he kept working on it even though Okabe wasn't like pushing him. And it sounds like Suzaha wasn't pushing him either. It sounds like he just was doing it, right? If she did, it might create a time paradox. Oh, got you. Yeah, that makes sense. That's fair. So she's, she's just kind of got to let him do... Which, which which means you shouldn't try to change him now, right? You should just let him be what he's going to be. Unless whatever he becomes to make the time machine is because of whatever she does to him. But yeah, that's very time paradoxical. I don't know. Just remember, you can't examine the time machine that came from the future to build your own. She decided to warn him again. How can he not, though? Because didn't Nakabachi view research that he had created, but that 
but the only reason that he had created it was because another Suzaha had gone to 2000 and as John Titter and then made the paper that he then saw and then based his research off of or oh no 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 I, I'm 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 I, I think I'm I think I'm mixing two different things up because he got his from from Kuditz right so Kuditz came up with hers all on her own I think right I feel like but I feel like I remembered them saying that at one point right that, that he got his information from 2000s Suzaha as John Titter and, and all that like information but oh but she did throw in lies though so maybe maybe that's okay I think I'm just mixing up two different things but anyway just not gonna think about it for the moment <laughs> she decided to warn him again I know that but sometimes I lose confidence can I really make a time machine of course you can Hang in there. Okay. Suzaha took the hairspray can off his neck. <laughs> Why hairspray, by the way? Oh, <laughs> that's why, okay. Hey, I was sure that was a gun and it wasn't. How could you trick your own dad? I'll use a real one next time, okay? Please don't. <laughs> Suzaha put the can of hairspray back on the shelf. It was something Rintaro Okabe had left here when he'd lived in the lab. It was still here, since its owner never came back for it. You know, in manga and video games, it's always really cute when a girl scolds her dad. Suzuha, Suzuha, can you try to say, Aw, oh, jeez, don't do that, Papa, in a really sweet voice, if you can? <sighs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, don't mess with Suzaha. Suzaha's our girl. Her dad shrank from Suzaha's glare. <laughs> I also like this version of Suzaha, because... The one that we got to see the most of in the first game was the the Alpha World Suzaha, who was kind of just she's she she's still like she knew stuff, but she was like sweeter. And then this one, she's like actually tough, you know. She <laughs> she's actually really freaking cool. I like that. <sighs> Suzaha sighed loudly and dropped herself on the sofa. She leaned back against the headrest and stared at the ceiling, then closed her eyes. What's wrong? It's nothing. You can't hide it from me. When you say it's nothing, that means I want you to listen to me, right? Alright, well, he's not entirely ignorant, I suppose. Because <laughs> that's, that's usually pretty true, right? Huh? Come on. Tell me. Dadu sounded very serious. Suzaha's eyes went wide for a moment. But then she realized. That line. That was in the girl game you were playing earlier, wasn't it? Oh, no! <laughs> I tried to give him credit. I did. I, I did. I was trying really hard, okay? I, I was like, well, you know, at least he understands that much. You know, he's not com completely ignorant, but, uh... <laughs> that's what I get for... That's what I get for trying to, in any way, shape, or form, redeem Dado. It's just not possible. <laughs> Ugh. That's the phrase that triggers the flag, right? She'd been living here for three months. She was starting to learn a little about Akihabara's culture, circa 2010. Dad, you better not be thinking about trying to take my route, okay? Ew, dude. I'm not. I wouldn't do that to my own daughter. Really? I always wondered about you in the future. 
Huh? Even after I hit puberty, you always kept asking me to take baths with you. Okay, it's a different culture, but still. <laughs> it's Naru. That's, that's what makes it different. Uh... What? That's scary. Okay, yeah, yeah. Maybe tell him now so he won't do it in the future, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe. I was in the military, and you were always working on the time machine, so we couldn't always be together. But you always got huggy around me. It was honestly kind of obnoxious. Ugh. Her dad looked honestly depressed, and she realized that she'd gone too far. You always said to me, you know, this is the worst world line possible, but your birth was the best thing that could have happened. I don't want to disappoint the future you, Dad, so I need to convince Uncle Okarin, no matter what. It's okay. I'll never be disappointed. Really? Yeah. But Uncle... He just won't listen to me. <clears throat> He's not going back to the past like this. He won't rescue Kurtz Makase. And he won't reach Steinsgate. Steinsgate. That was the name of the mysterious world line her dad had told her about in 2036, where World War III might not occur, leading Rintaro Okabe to that world line. Was her mission. But right now, it wasn't going well. Suzaha had come to 2010, and just like the mission had called for, She'd succeeded in sending Rintaro Okabe to July 28th. But then he'd failed. And he wasn't going to try again. Every time they met, she'd try to convince him. But who knew if her words were having any effect? In the end, this world line will converge into the Third World War, and many people will be killed. I came here to change that. But maybe fate says that I can't. Suzaha had something else she had to do here in Akihabara in December 2010, besides convincing Rintaro Okabe. And it meant she was running around every day. The exhaustion was starting to take its toll on her. During the war, she'd been able to keep herself sharp at all times, and this level of exhaustion wouldn't have meant anything. The relaxed atmosphere of 2010 was actually making her realize how tired she was. She was feeling very sleepy right now, actually. She was surprised at how willing she was to fall asleep in such an undefended position, but she didn't think she could beat the temptation. And then suddenly she felt something extremely cold on the back of her neck. She snapped awake in an instant. Her movements after that were lightning quick. She jumped up and slid behind the massive body in front of her, which obviously belonged to Itaru, then grabbed his arm and twisted it as she dropped him to the floor. <laughs> Crap. She went to draw the gun at her hip, and her hand swiped through empty air. And then she came back to reality. Her gun was hidden. She wasn't carrying it. This wasn't 2036. Ow! Ow! Oh, jeez! <laughs> Two cans of Dr. P clattered to the floor. I had a feeling. <laughs> that must have been what he, he'd put on her neck. W what are you doing, Dad? G -g getting you back. <laughs> getting you back. You're you're getting the trained military 
PTSD stricken person. <laughs> You're getting them back in it while they're sleeping or having their eyes closed and resting. Yeah, that'll that'll go along real swimmingly. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was half asleep, so I almost killed you. What? I've told you. That's how I've been trained. That could have turned out really badly for you. F fine, just let me go. This really hurts. Oh, sheesh. Suzaha let her father go. Oh. Itaru rubbed his arm and stood up, then grabbed the cans of Dr. P off the floor. He offered one to Suzaha. Anyway, you're giving up too soon. Keep at it a little longer. <sighs> I think Okarin's just tired and sleeping. Put some cold Dr. P up to his neck like I just did, and he'll wake up. <sighs> I mean, it's Okarin we're talking about. Yeah. She realized her dad was trying to cheer her up, and nodded. Huh? Then she heard footsteps coming up the stairs, and some slightly off-key humming. Is that nay? Ah! Their eyes met. Just the sound was enough to tell them who it was. Hide, Suzaha. Okie dokie. She still says okie dokie, though, which is funny. Suzaha moved fast. Maybe even faster than when she knocked her father to the ground. She quickly and silently jumped behind the curtain that separated the lab's development room from the rest of it. Just as she hid be beneath the desk, there was a knock at the door. Hello? Suzaha knew that voice, of course. It was her mom. Oh, what? Oh, no. How did... Did Mayuri convince her to come? She could tell from the noises he was making that her dad was panicking. There was another knock. Mayuri? Right, right. Uh, I'm coming. Itaru went to open the door. Suzaha took a deep breath and concentrated her mind. She remembered the time she'd spent three days and three nights on the battlefield with no food and nothing to drink, constantly aiming her rifle at, at the target. She erased any trace of her presence that could give her away. Her breathing started to become shallow. Dad, don't screw this up, okay? Oh no, oh no. Amaneshi, you're meeting Mayushi today? Itaru came back into the room with the girl. Yes, we were supposed to practice cooking together. She could hear plastic bags rustling. She must have brought the ingredients. Mayushi's not here yet. I see. Maybe I'm a little too early. Ah, uh, she came early for him. I don't know why, but she did. Ah, uh, I like her though. <laughs> Yuki Amane. Just as the name Amane suggested, she was Suzaha's mother in the future. In other words, the two of them in the other room were supposed to get married. Well, if you two were supposed to meet, I'm sure she'll get here eventually, right? Can I wait here? Of course. You're going to be cooking here, right? Yes. I hope you'll do some taste testing for us, Hashira. 
I don't know if I want to eat Mayushi's cooking. <laughs> don't worry. Mayuri's gotten a lot better lately. Uh huh. <laughs> Itadu was clearly nervous. As far as Suzaha knew, the only girl he'd acted that way around was Yuki Amane. Suzaha and Mayuri were practically family, and he got along fine with Big Sis Rumi, Faris Nyanyan, who worked at the maid cafe next door. So it wasn't that he didn't know how to act around girls, but for some reason, he always acted different when she was around. She told him that Yuki would be his wife someday. It was too late to do anything about it now, but maybe that was a mistake, she thought. Yeah, kinda. Yeah, that's gonna make him freak out. You needed to let it happen naturally, what? Um, is your sister not here today? Oh, okay. Got you. Suzaha is acting as his sister. That's funny. Huh? Uh, yeah. I see. Itaru Hashida's sister was none other than Suzaha herself. Around the same time Suzaha had started spending all her time in the lab, Yuki had become friends with Mayuri and Itaru, and began visiting more frequently. Which meant that avoiding her was almost impossible. And so she was forced to tell Yuki that she was Itaru's little sister. But still, she'd wanted to keep contact to a minimum in order to keep Yuki from finding out somehow. That was why she was hiding. So wait, so is it okay if she knows after the fact that they get married and, and are going to be having Suzaha? Like, at what point can you say that I'm your daughter without things maybe creating a paradox or, or making something not happen properly, right? But I mean, technically, not, you can't really screw it up, right? Like, whatever could screw it up, like the world or whatever would keep her from finding out because of causality. Isn't that how that would work? So like, Suzaha would still always become born on this particular world line, no matter what, somehow. Right? So, do you still have to worry about all that? Or, or does that not apply? I don't know. Oh, right. What do you think of this outfit? I just bought it. Huh? Yuki showed no signs of noticing Suzaha. She was twirling around in the center of the room, as if she was at a fashion show. Yuki was a cosplayer, and wanted as many people as possible to see her dressed up. Mayuri had told Suzaha that once before. In fact, Yuki and Mayuri spent a lot of time complimenting each other's outfits. Yup, it's great. Really great. Really? It's like, whoa, an angel for the win. Thank you. You should dress up too, Hashira. Just lose a tiny bit of weight and I think you'd look wonderful. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> I'm serious, you know. Uh, oh. <sighs> Itaru Hashida and Yuki Amane. As she listened to their awkward conversation, Suzaha remembered the last time she'd said goodbye to her dad. Oh, what the heck? Oh, we're going into the future! Ah! Okay. Dad, the peacekeeping squads have reached Mensebashi. Which means it's only a matter of time until they find this place. I guess the false information I leaked didn't do us any good. Let's hurry. Yeah. I'm opening it up. Yo, is this Radicon? Oh, it would be, yeah, because the time machine has to go back to the same spot, right? Yo. Wow. I had no idea there was a door here. Nobody will ever find this, huh? Come on inside. Wow. 
what is this place? Yo, what the frick? The room was almost totally empty and covered from top to bottom in soundproofing materials. This is so much different. We're getting like so many like different pieces of information all over the place rather than just like it's so it's so much different in the way it's telling the story uh, versus what the first game did. It's very interesting. Not only were there no windows, there wasn't even a door to the hallway. The building they were in was once a symbol of old Akihabara, before it was almost entirely destroyed by an air raid during the last days of the Third World War. Only a few people knew about the secret room inside it. The biggest reason was its secret. The silhouette of what looked like a satellite sitting in the corner. Oh, this is the time machine, isn't it? This is the time machine? Kagari, it's dangerous, so don't get too close. Suzaha spoke to the little girl clutching Mayeri's hand. Suzaha spoke to the little girl clutching Mayeri's hand. Most of the children in this era had skin inflammation somewhere on their body from all the radioactive rain, but she didn't. Her name was Kagari Shina. <gasps> oh, what? Huh? Is that, is that Mayuri's kid? What? Her registration form said she was 10 years old, but no one knew if that was true. She was an orphan who'd lost her parents in the Tokyo air raids when she was a baby, and nobody even knew her birthday. The name Kagari had been given to her by Mayeri who was working at the child welfare center that had taken her in. She took it from the word kagaribi, meaning bonfire, in hope that she could be a light even in these dark days. It had been four years since Mayeri had adopted her, and her name on the registration form had become Kagari Shina. It's pretty, mommy. Yeah, it is. Suzaha motioned for the Sheenas to step back and put her right hand and right eye up to the time machine sensor. The biometrics check cleared and the hatch slid open. Oh, did she have to do that before? Huh, I don't remember that. She went inside and fastened herself into the seat. We've never done a manned jump of this length before but the technology is just fine. So do it like the test jumps. Okie dokie. Suzaha began to flip switches, working her way through the startup procedure. She'd practiced it hundreds of times in preparation for this day. The faint rumble of the machine began to get louder. According to the data, the spot we're in now was the roof of the old radio building. There's a gap of about a meter, so when you land, there's going to be an impact. Oh, got you. That's why it, like, hits and shakes everything. Interesting. Roger. The time machine could move through time, but not space. To arrive at the radio building more than 60 years in the past... She needed to launch from right here. Even if something happens, stay calm. Remember your training. I'll be fine. I believe in your machine, Dad. Her words must have meant a lot to him, because he stuck out his lips towards her. She squished them back with her hand. That's creepy. That makes me sad. Do you not like your daddy, Suzaha? When you do it, it seems like you mean something else. <laughs> <sighs> you know, now, now that I know that he's still basically the same in the future. I mean, kind of. He's obviously a little bit different, but I, I, I was holding on to hope. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll still I'll wait. It's just one instance. Maybe it's fine. 
come on. I wouldn't think of my own daughter that way. So who was it who was saying, you're starting to remind me of your mother? <sighs> nope, he's the same. He's the same. The exact same. Never changed. Never got any better. Never grew up. He's the same. All right. <laughs> Her mother wasn't here. She'd become a victim of the war. Brutally killed by the peacekeeping squads. Ah. Oh. Don't take my joke seriously, please. What? It was a joke? Suzaha's voice sounded kind of disappointed. She set the destination for August 13th, 1975. Her first mission was there. That does it. Okay, Dad. My... She was about to say her goodbyes. But then... Uh... That was from the roof! They're coming in! Dang it! They're faster than I thought! Suzaha drew her gun from her holster. She was about to get out of the time machine, but her dad stopped her. No! Just go! But... you'll... We'll be fine. Just go, Suzaha. No, I can't... Mayushi! Get Kagari in there! And what? Huh? There's room for another person in here. Yo, what the frick? Where'd she go? Mayeri and Suzaha's father picked up the stunned Kagari and stuffed her into the time machine. Suzu, take care of Kagari. Okay. If Suzaha's mission succeeded, the world line would be rebuilt, and it was likely that the present Kagari would cease to exist. It might have been pointless to send her. But even so, a mother wants her child to live. That's how Suzaha's mom was, too. M mommy Kagari finally seemed to understand what was going on. She called out to her mom. No! I don't wanna! I don't wanna go! It's okay, Kakari. Suzuha's with you, okay? No! I wanna go with you! If you go to the past, you'll see the old me. I'll be a lot younger than I am now. I bet you'll be surprised. Mayeri handed Kagari a tiny keychain. It looked old. It may have been a brightly colored green once, but now it was completely faded. Oh, This is Mommy's Upa keychain. I'm giving it to you. Take care of it, okay? Oh. Once it was pressed firmly into Kagari's hand, she stepped back. Mayuri was smiling, but weeping at the same time. No, I don't want to go! I want to stay with you, Mommy! 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 No! Kakari, be quiet! <sighs> Kakari fell silent immediately. Even Suzaha had never heard Mayeti use that tone of voice. That's how harshly she scolded her daughter. Uh, mommy! Uh. Kagari was quietly weeping, unmoving. I'm closing the hatch! This time, the hatch really did begin to close. The inside of the machine, and the outside of it. The two worlds were about to be completely cut off from one another. Whether Suzaha's mission was successful or not, she would probably never see any of them again. Suzu, 
Make sure you take care of Kagari. And tell Okarin that Steins Gate really exists. Tell him. Don't give up no matter what, you moron. Okie dokie. And then the door was sealed shut, and Mayuri and Iteru's voices disappeared along with the chaos outside. Dad, I love you. She whispered towards the door, now sealed shut. Let's go, Kagari. To the past. She booted up the time machine. Hashida, where's the vacuum? Suzaha snapped back to reality. Yuki was getting closer to the development room she was hiding in. Um, it's right behind that curtain. Oh, crap! Behind the curtain? Uh, I'll get it! <laughs> Iteru motioned for her to stop, and then quickly slid into the room. As he reached down to pick the vacuum off the floor... His gaze locked with Suzaha's as she hid under the desk. Make sure she doesn't find out, Dad. Okie dokie. Did you find the vacuum? Oh, y yes! Evidently, Yuki was trying to be nice by cleaning up. The place was pretty messy right now. Knowing Yuki's personality, Suzaha could imagine she'd want to clean it. Itaru grabbed what looked like a vacuum cleaner off the floor and left the development room. What is that thing? Future gadget number five. If you take it apart, you can use it as a normal vacuum. A vacuum's supposed to clean. If you take it apart, won't that just make more of a mess? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're so smart, Hashida. But sometimes you can be so silly. You... You think so? But you know, I like people like that. What did you say? Iteru started to panic again, and Suzaha sighed. But I think you really do need to reconsider the way you live. You should clean every day if you can. This place gets really dusty. And that's not all. There's also what you eat. You had instant ramen again today, didn't you? H how did you know? There was a half-eaten cup of ramen in the kitchen. I see. <laughs> and look at all these snacks. I tell you all the time that you eat too much. I do try to watch it, you know. Trying isn't good enough. If you keep eating nothing but cup noodles and snacks, you're going to get sick, okay? Also... You need to exercise a little. <laughs> She's literally doing everything Suzaha said. <laughs> She's saying the same things. It's funny. Ugh. <sighs> Yuki Amine was saying the exact same thing that Suzaha had just said. Perhaps they really were mother and child. Suzaha was just beginning to feel a little homesick when she sensed another visitor approaching. Mayuri! Da -da -da. The door to the lab opened, and a greeting she'd heard many times before resounded throughout the room. Sorry, Yuki. I'm a little late. It was Mayuri coming to see Yuki. But there was another presence there, too. Hi there, Mayeri. 
I see Okabe's with you. Oh! Oh man, he just looks so dead. I hate it. <laughs> it makes me so sad. Oh! Okarin! It's been forever, man! Oh, yeah. It has. When she heard his voice, Suzaha ground her teeth a little. Okay, we're going back to Okabe. Here we go. Interesting. What did you say? Didn't you hear me? I said it was interesting. You're not going to tell me you want to go, are you? I'd love to. I shouldn't have told you. I was standing in the middle of Ikebukuro with a smartphone in one hand, staring up at the sky. I'd been trying to talk to the Amadeus Kudits as much as possible lately. Sometimes I would contact her, and sometimes Kudits would contact me. It didn't feel any different than having a friend who lived in the real world. Talking on a smartphone in a crowded place like this was a little embarrassing, but I told myself that compared to the things I used to do, it was nothing. <laughs> I'd chosen harmless topics for our discussion, but it still reminded me so much of talking to the old Kudits that I sometimes forgot myself. I'd done that just now, when I accidentally told her about the lab. She had seized on it. So this lab you were talking about, did the original me ever go there? Yeah. No. Well, that tells me nothing. Which is it? <laughs> Never. Kuditz had been part of the lab in the Alpha world line. In this world line, she died before ever becoming a lab member. Of course, she'd never even known where it was. You seem to have the wrong idea, so let me straighten you out. We call it a lab, but it's not. It's just... It's just a group of people messing around. And... Suzaha was living there right now, and Dadu spent a lot of time there. If they found out about Kuditz, things could get complicated. I'd prefer it if you would finish your sentences. It's nothing. Either way, I want to see more of the outside world. All the times I've talked to Maho and the professor, it's been inside the lab. Why would they give us this power? I, I'm still... Okay, I am still... <laughs> I'm still sketched out by the fact that they gave us cuts instead of one of them doing it. Why aren't they the ones walking around with her on the phone, you know? Why, why'd they give her to us? You know? I just... Something doesn't add up. I don't know what it is yet. That's why I'm out here early on a Sunday morning, taking you around Ikebukuro. 10 a.m. Even at this hour, the area in front of Ikebukuro Station was crowded. It was going to get even more crowded as it got closer to noon. I was willing to take you to Maiden's Road, if I had to. What's that? There's a whole world there you know nothing about. Wait, I just looked it up. Hmm... Are you really interested? W of course not! Anyway, take me to this lab of yours today. <laughs> now that you've told me about it, you need to take responsibility. Got it? <laughs> and then she hung up. It was like I was her own personal taxi service. Could it couldn't move around on her own, so there was no getting around that, but... Sheesh. She's so selfish. She didn't seem to think very highly of me. 
At this rate, she might start treating me worse than a servant. <laughs> the real credits was one thing. Or, no, maybe it wasn't. But being treated that way by the artificial credits was incredibly humiliating. Wouldn't it be a humiliation for all of humanity? <laughs> maybe I should do something about this. As I mumbled to myself. Ah. Huh? All cutting? Mayeti called out to me. She was carrying a lot of bags. It was probably materials for one of her costumes. Hey, hey! Were you just talking to someone? Huh? Oh, uh... That was... A friend from my class at college. I see. So are you going to go meet them today, too? No. I don't have any plans for today. Are you going to work, Mayuri? Nope. I'm meeting Yuki at the lab. The lab. Was this good timing or bad timing? I know. Why don't you come with me? It's been so long. And you'll get to eat Yuki's home cooking. And... Mayushi's gonna try hard to make something, too. Aw. How about it? <laughs> In the end, I went with her. Aw. <laughs> You look really happy. Yep, I am happy. Mayuri had been smiling the whole time. But I was the opposite. The minute I got here, I was so nervous. I felt like I was going to throw up. I didn't really want to see Suzaha. Huh? Are you okay, Okabe? Yo, dude, Tadoji! Yeah. Oh, he's still the same! Yo! They didn't change his model at all! <laughs> I was expecting to see something different, but he's the exact same. Yo! The door to the Brawn Tube workshop on the first floor opened, and out came the building's owner, Yugo Tenoji. Mr. Tenoji! Da -da -da. Hey there! Wow, aren't you cold in just a t-shirt? I'm pretty tough. <laughs> when I'd been living in the lab, I'd given him the nickname Mr. Braun. It'd been a long time since I'd seen him. Okabe! From the look of it, you're actually making something of yourself at college. Thanks. Come to think of it, how are we handling the rent? I asked Mayeti instead of him. Oh yeah, we, so he's still, he still, he says we, so is he, he, he hasn't fully detached himself, but he's still, that's interesting. It's just an interesting choice of wording that he used. I used to give it directly to Tenoji, but. Um... Hashida deposits the money when it's due. Don't worry. I see. Yeah. <laughs> this man. Was he a rounder in this world line too? Oh yeah, dude! Oh yeah, we don't know. We don't actually know, do we? He probably is though, right? Because we're not in Steins Gate. So he probably still is. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. I got, got text. Oh, Maho. Okay. How did things go with Kuditz after that? No problems. Can we do something about her mouth? I want to talk to Maho, too. Um, I'm just going to say no problems. Right? Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. No problems. I see. 
Anything you can tell me, no matter how small, uh, would be a, would be a help. That she's interested in Maiden's Road, maybe? What's that? A place where a whole world you know nothing about exists. Wait, I'll look it up. Bad idea. That darkness is very deep. <laughs> if there's anything that seems off, I'll let you know. Would you? I know it's a lot of trouble. Please and thank you. How did you get Luca's little sticker? How did you get Luca's little sticker? Also, where can I get these stickers? I want them for my phones when I text my friends. I want them. <laughs> All right. There was no way I could ask him. I couldn't help but be wary of him. That's why I'd started to put some distance between us. If nothing else, I'd avoided trying to interact with him. Bye now. Don't cause too much trouble. Tonoji saw I'd gone silent and went back inside. Mayeti looked over at me with a worried expression. You okay? Sure you don't want to go home? <sighs> Let's go. Tonoji didn't matter. What mattered was... Why was I here? Did I feel like something needed to change? Yes! Or did I really want to show Kuditz the lab? I went up the stairs, still unsure of the answer. Do -do -do. Mayuri went in first. Sorry, Yuki. I'm a little late. Hey there, Mayuri. I peeked inside the room. Daru and Yuki were there. Their eyes went wide when they saw me. I see Okabe is with you. Oh, Okuri! It's been forever, man. Oh, yeah. It has. I quickly scanned the room. There was no sign of Suzaha. Part of me was a little relieved. Can I come in? It's your own lab, dude. Don't ask that. That's true, I guess. I don't think I can call Kuditz right now. I followed Mayeti to the lab and tried to relax my legs by sitting on the couch. But I didn't feel relaxed at all. It felt like my skin was crawling. I glanced over at Yuki. Oh, look at her without the scarf! So cute. I like the way they have her hair in this. It's so cute. That outfit's so cute, Yuki. I wore it because I wanted to hear you say that. It's so nice. Mayushi wants to wear it too. Want to switch outfits later? Would I be the right size? I heard about Yuki's future from Suzaha too. Oh! Uh, 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 <laughs> Do we answer? I, I guess. What the? I figured you would have reached the lab by now. I ran into the development room in the back, clutching my smartphone. You've got a lot of free time, don't you? Why are you lowering your voice? Do you not want your friends to know about me? Of course not. I hadn't even checked with Maho and Dr. Leskin in to see if it was okay to tell other people about Amadeus. Oh shoot, but now Suzaha's in there. Well, that's fine. I can figure out what's going on. Kuritz lowered her voice as well. Just give me a little look around the room. All you have to do is hold the camera up. Sheesh. I 
side and held the smartphone up to my chest. I spun around once, like I was taking a video with my camera. Hmm. Filthy. That's your first impression. <laughs> Sorry. I'll try that again. It's full of junk. That wasn't much better. <laughs> well, it was true. I know labs are never clean, but this is especially bad. It's about as bad as Maho's hotel room. Oh, okay, so she has taken her to to her own. So they, they must have her on her on, on their phones as well. Interesting, okay. Is it okay to share her private information like that? You should tell her to clean her room, too. She'd bite my head off if I did that. But still... Kuditz paused and smiled. I kind of always wanted to have a shared room like this. Oh, It must be pretty nice if there are all these people here. Kuditz... Yeah, cut it. In the Alpha World line, you said the same thing. You really... Uncle, who are you talking to? <laughs> I suddenly heard a girl's voice from under the desk and was so surprised I screamed. Who, who's there? Shh, be quiet. Huh? Is that you, Suzaha? Shh! <laughs> Was she hiding? But why? Daru, Mayuri, and Yuki heard me scream and ran over to see what the problem was. Uh-oh. Oh, oh Karin, what's wrong? Huh? Is that Suzaha? Uh-oh. Suzaha looked upset. It was only then I realized who she was hiding from.